Hey, welcome to my channel. This is a video in English about Antarctica. I just got back to Germany and before this I was in Antarctica. It was a very spontaneous trip. It was basically the end of this part of the world trip and I received lots of questions about Antarctica, how you book it, with which agencies, how was the life on board. So that's why I decided to make a video in English. So I'm not a native speaker, please don't complain any mistakes. I just received tons of questions and I wanted everybody to understand this. So I have lots of information written down and I will just go through every point and then I have some questions on Instagram as well. I will try to answer them and I hope you will go to Antarctica next. So let's start with the video. Point number one, booking. This is probably the most important thing and the questions that I received most about Antarctica. You can book it in a normal travel agency. We did a last minute booking, so it wasn't planned at all. I was traveling in Patagonia already with a friend that I met in Santiago and he had the idea to go to Antarctica and then we looked up the pictures and I said, yeah, it looks great, let's do this. And then we looked up the prices and he said, no, let's not do this. It's quite expensive, of course, it is Antarctica. But we found a blog post from a girl, I think it was two or three years old, who said that she could manage to get a last minute deal. So we contacted two agencies that we found that give last minute deals. And one of them is freestyleadventuretravel.com and the other one is travelwild.com. The cruise itself was from G Adventures, so probably you can book directly over G Adventures, but I'm not sure if they also give the last minute deals. So yeah, we just wrote these two travel agencies an email and said we are interested in a last minute deal, um, if they have something for, and then we just told them the weeks we are interested in. We were probably halfway down in Patagonia at this moment. Well, from this point on we received emails with a newsletter and certain last minute deals and they were still too expensive for us. So we said for ourselves we want to have something under 5,000 US dollars. And then we were in Puerto Rio Tranquilo in Chile to visit the Marble Caves. And we received an email from travelwild.com about a last minute deal. They still have two places available for 4,700 US dollars. We just looked at each other and said yes, let's do this, we book it now. If you're booking a last minute deal, everything has to be very fast. We had to transfer our money immediately. That also means that your account has to be valid. So you have to have this money on your account. You don't have like two or three days left to transfer money from another account or whatever. So everything had to be very fast. I think we received the email and we booked two hours later. I think on G Adventures, on the ship we have been, a four uh, bed cabin is the the biggest one with the most people, they have three bed cabins and two bed cabins. And on the website you can see the ships and the categories of cabins. And what we found out later when we were on the ship, so there are people who book one or one and a half years in advance, of course pay a lot more for it. And if they don't have every cabin um, occupied, like full, they upgrade the people who paid full price and try to get the four cabin rooms full with last minute deals. So that's how it obviously works. So we booked it and it was eight days until the ship disembarked from Ushuaia. So we, we booked it, we just had one more thing in, in Puerto Rio Tranquilo to do. So afterwards we went immediately to Ushuaia, which took us about 31 hours in buses. So we were traveling about three days. That means that we arrived in Ushuaia about four days before the ship disembarks. So booking was eight days in advance. We were in Ushuaia four days before the ship disembarks. Price, like I said, was 4,700 US dollars per person for a four bed cabin. Yes, it was a 12 day um, cruise. They have different packages and options on the website of G Adventures. So we booked it online with the travel agencies that send us emails. I met people who actually booked it in Ushuaia. So that is really, really last minute. But it can happen that you're in Ushuaia and you don't get an offer that is 
appropriate for you or cheap enough for you. So at the end, you maybe stay 10 days in Ushuaia. Let's come to clothing. My travel buddy and me we were both on a long-term trip, so we don't have really like Antarctica appropriate clothes with us. Um, of course, we traveled in Patagonia before, so I, I bought a fleece pullover in Santiago on a second-hand shop for like six dollars. That's what I used in Patagonia all the time for the volcano hike, for the glacier trekking. And then I had my normal layers, like a, like a shirt, a long sleeve, sports shirt. But when it comes to upper body wear, you get a parka. When you do it with G-Adventures at least, you can keep it. That keeps you really, really warm. Definitely pack in layers and the warmest layer should be a fleece and then you have this really amazing parka. They send you a lot of information when you book and they tell you what clothing you need. So there is a whole packing list. I think the packing list is for people who actually never travel. But what they say, you need waterproof trousers and waterproof gloves to get into the zodiacs. Zodiacs are the little boats that bring you from the ship to the, the islands. And of course, they can waves get in when you when you go out of the zodiac, um, you step into the water. So we needed waterproof clothes. So we were in Ushuaia four days before and thought, okay, we will just rent them. We don't want to buy them. The problem was that the skiing season was already over in Ushuaia, so most of the shops didn't rent uh, waterproof clothes anymore. Um, we were trying to get pants for three days. At the end, we were already willing to buy them. And then we found the last shop, the last shop. We found one shop, it's Extremo Ushuaia. And it's actually a biking shop. It's a very small shop in the main street of Ushuaia with a very small entrance and they just have a few bikes in their shopping window. So it's actually a biking gear shop, but they also rent skiing equipment. We rented um, both pants, skiing pants and gloves which was in total 85 US dollars, but you definitely need them. You can't go into the Zodiacs if you don't have waterproof pants. The only things that I still bought, a second pair of thick trekking socks. I bought a buff, like this thing that you wear around your neck or you can wear it as a hat. And for shoes, you get rubber boots. You don't have to care about shoes. The pants have to go over the rubber boots because when you step into the water, when you go out from the zodiac the water will just go into your boots if the the pants are not over it so make sure that you have pants that are wide enough at the bottom that's for clothing it's antarctica just dress warmly take a scarf with you a hat um maybe something like this because sometimes it's not that cold um, i bought this actually on the ship so some people ask me about the weather I was there in November. I don't think that you can say anything consistent about weather. We had super luck with the weather. We had lots of days with sunshine, which is obviously not usual. That's what the expedition team said, that we were really lucky with the weather. Crossing the, the Drake Passage wasn't that bad. The first three days in Antarctica were a little bit cloudy and gray, um, but the last four days actually we had um, just sunshine and blue sky. It was amazing. But obviously not normal. So just take this in mind. With Antarctica, you never know what you get. More important is actually the seasons for the animals you want to see. So I saw an orca and we saw some hump whales, but actually it's not whale season in November. If you are really looking for whales, and they also said at the, at the ship that when you go later, like in February, March, you will see a lot more whales. Um, the same with seals. We haven't seen that many seals. There were a few, but if you're interested, especially in this, go later in the season. We had great weather in November. I can definitely recommend November. Penguins are always there. You don't have the, pa the baby penguins. Again, this is a season thing. It was already mating season, so you can see them doing their thing. But there are no baby penguins when you go in November. Weather, like I said, it's always unpredictable. That's what they also tell you when you enter the ship. Even when you go on the ship, they don't know what will the weather be like in two days or three days. So you pay the price, but you never know, um, for example, if you can do every landing. It's always depending on the weather. The services that are included for this price, the accommodation on the ship. So a four, three or two bed cabin and one night in a hotel before you embark the ship. Uh, that 
For us, it was a four-star hotel with a really nice view over Ushuaia. The cabins on the ship are also really nice. I mean, a four-bed cabin at the end is a small dorm room, of course, but the beds are really comfortable. They clean once or even maybe twice per day. Actually, every time we go to landings, they clean the rooms. And the next thing that is included is food, three times per day. For breakfast, it's always buffet. For lunch, it's always buffet. And for dinner, they change between buffet or sit-in dinner with like a five-course menu. And the food is amazing. In the, in the lounge, there are always cookies. And when we had the recap in the evening, they had like little snacks, like little sandwiches, little cakes. Um, sometimes they brought like canapes to you. Um, when we watched movies, they brought us popcorn. So this was everything included. When it comes to drinks, you have water suspensers all over the ship so you get a, actually you get a, a small bottle they always had tea and coffee and hot chocolate for free the next thing included like i said is the parka that you get like the thick red jacket and the rubber boots that you get on the ship when it comes to things to do you have the landings that are included so this is a different concept than when you do normal cruises because you just pay the ship and you pay for every single landing. Now with Antarctica, they can't promise anything because everything is unpredictable. Everything is depending on the weather. So if the weather is perfect, you do at least two, you do two landings per day. If this is not happening, it's not happening. And that's why you don't pay for the landings separately. So you have your package price and this is what you pay. And then you will see what you get when you are there. Don't blame the people, they were just there for you and for your safety. Uh, something that actually counts as a landing, uh, what we did was crossing the Le Maire Channel and we were the first ship in the season that was able to do, to do that. That was really spectacular, it was amazing. Sometimes when there is no option of getting on shore because the ice is too strong or whatever, they say, okay, we will bring every Zodiac out so everybody is going on a Zodiac and we will do a Zodiac tour. So this also counts as a landing and it's amazing. Another thing that is included is lectures, workshops and something like this. So uh, the G Expedition team is really great. Most of them have like one topic that they're a master in. So you can, we had lectures about seals, about penguins, about icebergs, um, about photography. We had just a, a lecture about Antarctica itself. Everything of this is optional, even the landings. If you don't feel well, if the, the weather is maybe too bad for you, you can always stay on the ship and you never have to go to one of the lectures, but you pay for it. So if you're interested in these things, go to them. Like I said, workshop, we had photography workshops. One of the um, expedition team, she is actually an artist back in Cape Town and she had watercoloring workshops for us. So they bring you all the equipment and you can paint on papers or in your travel journal. And she tells you some techniques about watercoloring that was really interesting. And then we had movies, like documentaries about Antarctica, about ice, about ice melting, global warming, um, but also something entertaining like Happy Feet. Yeah, so there are just different things. And then of course we had music. There was a musician on board and he was playing almost every evening. They have a bar. Sometimes they had a whole band because a few of the Filipinos that are working there, they actually formed a band a few years ago. So there is lots of entertainment. Another thing that is included is a doctor but for small things, especially for seasickness. Okay, services that are excluded. When we talked about food earlier, it's everything on drinks that I didn't mention before. So every alcoholic and sodas, um, yeah, things like this. Well, I think a beer was like three US dollars and the cocktails were between six and eight US dollars. So I, in my opinion, this is a really good price. Actually, when you go out in Argentina, it's more expensive. And sometimes we had Antarctica drinks. So I think from two excursions, they brought um, little icebergs with them. So we had them as ice in our drinks in the evening. That is really special because you're basically drinking a 10,000 year old cocktail, which is really, really cool. Another thing that you have to pay for if you want it is internet. They have satellite internet available. I didn't get it. I think it's quite expensive. I don't remember the price anymore, but it was a price that I wasn't willing to pay. And it's also quite nice to be 12 days off once in your life.
And then they have a gift shop. You can buy like little knickknacks, souvenirs, but also if you really need some clothing, warmer clothing like gloves, a headband, a hat. So G Adventures supports some organizations. So they have like raffles and auctions on some evenings. And this is something you have to pay for separately as well. Another service that is excluded is kayaking or camping. These are optional offers that G Adventures offers you on the ship, but you have to book it in advance. I think kayaking was 700 US dollars, camping 350 US dollars. I didn't do both because it wasn't in my budget. Camping is only one night, so you actually have dinner on the ship and then you go to the island that they spot for you um, where you do the camping and then you stay overnight and at five in the morning I think the people come back to the ship. For kayaking it's 700 US dollars but if the weather is good enough you can actually do it every day you do a landing. So it's not only once. The thing with kayaking, what most people didn't know or didn't assume, they thought it's an optional offer because it's 700 but actually it's you have to choose if you want to do the normal landing or if you want to go kayaking. So sometimes they did like half-half. They were kayaking half of the time we did the landing and then they got on shore as well. Sometimes they were kayaking only. So they missed things maybe that we saw on shore. That's something you have to keep in mind. I didn't do any of these. Um, I really enjoyed the normal landings. That was good enough for me. I think camping would have been cool if you have the $350 extra. Kayaking, in my opinion, is not a necessity. Then a lot of people asked me what was the experience on the ship. So we were there for 12 days. Uh, we, we arrived on the ship. Everything was really, really organized. You get picked up from the hotel that you stay before. They bring your luggage in front of your room. And then we checked in and we immediately met in the Discovery launch. And the expedition team introduced themselves and they are really amazing. I had already the feeling they really loved the job. In my opinion, it was a really great atmosphere on the ship. The expedition team was amazing. You could always ask them things about the animals, about stones, about um, plants about the weather, about everything. And there was always somebody who had an answer for it. And so we were 124, 125 passengers on the ship. That is max, every room was full. And I think there was seven, like 70 or 80 um, people stuff on board as well. And after a few days, you actually know everybody. And you order a drink once and they know your name and your room number. That is amazing. But the rooms were really nice in my opinion. I was traveling and shitty hostels for nine months so for me it was like a luxury stay for 12 days. I told already about the food like mostly it was buffet but also sit-in dinners. They had always vegetarian options. Something about the age average. So you have probably seen on my pictures and some people asked me this and that's something I was wondering as well before. Um, how old are the people on the ship? So I thought we are probably the youngest. You can see on my pictures that we were a big group with young people. Again, this is something that is not normal because on the third day, I think in the evening I was in the bar and the staff captain was next to me and I started talking to him, asking him things about the ship. And then I, I looked to the, like, to the stage and everybody was dancing and having fun and I asked him, is it actually normal that there were so many young people on board? And he said, no, it's not. Normally, the, the age average is a lot higher. They were actually wondering themselves why there were so many people for this booking. They had extremely many last minute bookings, obviously. So this is something you have to keep in mind. He said sometimes there are only like six, seven younger people, but they will also find themselves as a group. So you will probably always find people. But it's not normal that you have like 25 to 30 people well, now I'm 35, I was probably the oldest of the young people. In our case, it was like that and it was amazing. But it's normal wake up call, breakfast, first landing, coming back to the ship, having lunch immediately. Then sometimes you have like one and a half to two hours in between. Then there is a second landing, come back to the ship, then it's a recap. We were able to ask questions, they told us again where we were and there was a forecast what we will do next day if the weather stays like this. So that is something that I really liked and then it's dinner and then they have always entertainment in the evening like a movie or going to the bar or the band is playing or whatever. So this is like a normal day on the ship. 
just for entertainment. You have the bar. There is a library on the ship and then they have the launch and they have the outer decks of course that you can go to if they don't close them because of them safety reasons. Uh, they have a sauna on board. There is a gym and like I said they have a gift shop. And then I got questions about how you pay. There is no cash on the ship. Everything you will pay at the end with your credit card. So you have to register your credit card in the beginning. Every time you pay something on the ship in the gift shop, internet, um, drinks, um, raffle tickets, they will just put on your room number, on your name, and you pay everything at the end. So I think this is everything that I wrote down as information and now we will go through the questions I got over Instagram. Question number one from Toysine. Is the cold actually bearable? Always imagine Antarctica to be cold enough to freeze your nose off. So like I said, we had really amazing weather. I can't talk about other excursions, but it can be like, I think the coldest when it comes to air temperature that we had was minus nine degrees Celsius. Sometimes it feels colder, of course, when there is wind and snow, um, minus nine can feel like minus 15, I don't know. So the first three days were a little bit cold, but when you dress appropriately, that's pretty fine. Other than that, we were really, really lucky with the weather. That was my experience, my Antarctica experience. Sometimes it felt like a beach day, but obviously it can get very, very cold and very windy and icy there. In my case, I was lucky. It was definitely bearable. Most days I even didn't need gloves. This may be another thing uh, that I would recommend. So we had these waterproof gloves with, with us that we needed to go on the Zodiacs. But I also had like thin gloves with me that I wore underneath the thick ones. And most days it was actually too warm for the thick ones. And I had on the thin ones like the smartphone fingers that I can control my smartphone and my camera with. So this is something I would recommend when it comes to clothing. Question number two from Shaney1989. She's interested in the costs and how spontaneous we booked. I've said this already, we booked eight days in advance. I paid 4,700. And for everything that I spent on the ship, like drinks, I got a raffle ticket, I bought some things in the gift shop, uh, and then the tip. I think for me, everything together was 340 US dollars. So in, to in total for me, it was like a little bit over 5,000 US dollars that I paid for Antarctica. Oh no, and the, the 85 US dollars that I paid for renting the waterproof pants and gloves. So that, so we are over 5,100 US dollars for me. Third question from Angelina Hock. Where did you book um, over the internet or when you were in Ushuaia? I said this before, we booked online because if you are in Ushuaia already, it's, it's definitely possible to book it there. But if you don't receive an offer that is um, good for you, you will wait in Ushuaia to do that. Well, then we have a question from Beauty Butterflies that I actually answered as well, uh, as well already. She's interested in how the life on the ship is. Like She has obviously done um, cruises before, but not in Antarctica. So she imagines that there, are no, there is not like an other cover band. Um, no, there is another other cover band. But it is when it comes to comfort and luxury. Like I said, I've never done a real cruise, but I had the feeling it's actually comparable. It's just everything a little bit smaller. Another question, uh, Mickey talks. She wants to know about the costs. I answered this already. And another question from Angelina Hock. She wants to ask how we pay these high amounts of money. Like I said, on the ship, you don't pay in cash. You pay everything with the credit card at the end. But basically you pay everything with your credit card, but if you want, keep some US dollars with you. Uh, when it comes to the price for the cruise, we transferred the money. No, actually I think they, they got it from our credit card. We had to send them every detail, also the security number, and they um, booked it from our credit cards. Yeah, but this is something, like I said, that had to be very fast, because otherwise somebody else would have gotten our rooms. 
I think that's it. That were all the questions, all the informations that I can think of that are maybe important for Antarctica. I had an amazing time. Um, everybody always asked me what was your highlight of your world trip before I went to Antarctica, what was the thing that you liked the most and I always told them you can't, you can't tell, you can't compare Philippines um, with Patagonia, everything is nice for another reason. Now I definitely say Antarctica was my highlight, it was amazing, it's like being on another planet and of course we had very much luck with weather, with the people on board. It can probably be different from my experience. Um, I had an amazing time. I saw amazing things. Um, I'm in love with penguins now. So I can definitely recommend doing an Antarctica trip. And if you want to go to Antarctica, go now, soon. Ciao.